Are we on? Yeah. Hello everybody. Welcome to your Ikigai workshop. Can everybody hear me? Are we live? Can I get some, some thumbs up? Get up on here. See if everyone can hear me and get tuned in. We're on? Where are we? Here, yes, okay. All right, we've got the thumbs up. Everyone can. So ladies, welcome to your Ikigai workshop. I hope you enjoyed the other two workshops that we did this morning. You had your Ayurveda at 8 a.m. with Briar, and then you just had a really nice workshop with Janine and Frankie talking all about self-sabotage. So I hope you enjoyed that. Now Janine and I are gonna sit down and we're gonna be talking all about Ikigai, about how to find your purpose in life. So that deep contentment. We are going to go through all of the um, all of the four key points in Ikigai. I'll tell you what they are. Yeah, I'll wait for Janine to join me because we're going to go through them together. <laughs> I'll give you the microphone. We could share it like a mic, couldn't we? Yeah, <laughs> like magic mic. This is our magic mic. <laughs> I'll just log on here and I'll just... You can see everyone. Yeah. I can see everyone. We are away and also run our presentation as well. Let's see. Hello, hello, ladies. I hope you enjoyed the workshop so far. I don't know why I planned to one after the other. <laughs> <laughs> My brain is just returning to its normal state now. <laughs> And uh, we're looking forward to getting into this amazing workshop that uh, we're so excited about. Um, Icky Guy is one of my biggest passions, for those that know me well, will know. And I can't wait to share it with you. So let me just... Yeah, this is such an interesting topic. Isn't it? Especially if you're at that kind of crossroads in life where you're yeah. trying to figure out what it is that you want to do. Exactly. Oh, that's random. That's when I spilt stuff on my computer. Mm -hmm. Just hit um oh dear, look. <laughs> I just spilt some tea on my computer <laughs> and it's done some random things to my presentation now. It looks like space talk. I'm like, oh what's that? <laughs> With me, we we'll just wait for a few more of you beautiful ladies to jump on. Let me just check. How many Everything people is we've working got? well. Oh, nice. We've got 10 people. Okay, great. Nice to see everyone. Ladies, when you jump on, if you can say where you're from, please, when you're tuning in from. And also, if you can give the live a like, what that does is it bumps it up in people's news feed, Facebook news feeds. So they will see it um, when they're scrolling through their Facebook. They're more likely to see it. So if you can do us a favor and do that, it would be wonderful. And let me try and get on the live stream myself. Here we go. Oh, here we are. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I know. Look when you can see screen. yourselves. Oh my goodness. Hey, Anne-Marie. Hi, Anne Hi, Annie. Hey, Annie. Hey, Monique. Got everyone online. Let me turn my volume off here. Okay, two. All righty, righty. Hmm. Do you want to clip it? Oh, yeah, might as well. Yeah. It's a pesky little mic. Easier. Where should I do it? Should I do it here? Do you yeah. think it's still okay for you? I'll, I can talk quite loud. Okay, cool. <laughs> like Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie with her soft voice. <laughs> Hello, caller. <laughs> so she's so used to doing all those meditations. Meditations, I know. I know. Lucy's got her fitness voice yeah, on exactly. today. So we've got the two opposite. I'm always shouting. <laughs> Almost too loud. We thought the mic was still working and it was just broken. 
Hi. We had a little funny story, ladies. We had a little um, mic issue. Just since Facebook's done its up, it's doing a really weird thing with mics and iPhones. And uh, Frankie couldn't understand why it wasn't working for her, yet for Lucy, we'd listen to Lucy's videos. We're like, oh, that's so unusual. Lucy's mic's fine. And what we discovered was Lucy didn't have a mic. She was like, oh, yeah, it's not working. And that was just her voice. Because I was shouting really loud. <laughs> shouting, doing all of her fitness, so it carried really well. Just when we thought we had all the technology worked out, Facebook did an update. An update. Naughty and, um, Facebook. Yeah, we had to change everything again, but... Yeah. Yeah. Um, ladies, welcome. I think we can jump on. We, I think we can. I think we've got enough people that have jumped on now, haven't we? I think we can get into it. Um, so ladies, welcome to the Ikigai workshop. Some of you may have seen us do it earlier in the year. I think that was in April. Wasn't yeah, we it? did, yeah. At our first mini escape, it was a really popular one. It was great to do that poll again. We always like to do polls, so we hear from you what you'd like to hear. So we're actually delivering things that you see of value. Um, and Ikigai was really high up in that poll. So we thought, okay, well, well, we'll do it again. It's something we both love chatting about. We're really passionate about helping women find their purpose, or Ikigai, which means reason for living. And that's what Ikigai is. It, it's that thing that makes us jump out of bed in the morning, isn't it? That yeah. makes our heart beat faster. It gives us that reason for being. We feel deeply connected to what we're doing and that sense of purpose. Yeah, that deep contentment when you feel fulfilled what you're doing yes yeah. yeah fulfillment's a great word so that's when you know you've got your ikigai and it's something that can take years to to find I'm going to share a story soon of how I found mine <clears throat> and I started that pursuit when I was in Japan as a 20 year old uh, and it took me a long time to find mine but I finally discovered it and I'm living it today which is wonderful and I think it's just so topical isn't it because 2020 is a year where we've all felt at that global level uncertainty. Mm -hmm. We all thought we had these jobs that were, you know, which were a given. We thought we had all of these freedoms that were a given. We felt like our world was predictable and the universe taught us that it's not anything that we've known to be secure. You know, so many people are going through mass changes at the moment. And the good thing about, the good thing about change forced us to have those sorts of conversations around, am I truly happy? Yeah. Am I doing what I love? Am I with the person that I really love? I was just about to say, people always say change is good, and, but yeah. not a lot of people like it, but obviously we've all been forced so much into change. And absolutely. Yeah, it, has, it has been good. Yeah, absolutely. And you see that, and, and it, it's evidenced by people, you know, finally stepping into careers that they've wanted to do, um, finally making those decisions to leave relationships that aren't serving them. I know so many people that have been brave enough and really stepped into their courage to make those big transitions. I've moved countries. How many people do you know that have moved countries this year? Mm. You know, they've finally decided to move home or they've finally decided to pursue their dreams and m move abroad. You know, it, it's in these times of great adversity when we're forced to have those difficult conversations with ourselves yeah. to go, Am I truly happy? And adversity, what always follows adversity is change if you choose to. Yeah, really stepping outside of that comfort zone. and yeah. yeah. We've been forced out of our comfort zone, all of us. I don't know anyone that could say, oh, I kept in my comfort zone this year just by Not global, you know, uh, this global event that we've had. It's meant that every single one of us are outside of our comfort zone at some point this year. And, and to a large extent still are. So the good news is that that can lead you to really looking at and covering what are the things that truly make you tick because it's when those blinkers are off, that's when we actually start asking those questions. When it's all sunny days and blue skies and you know everything's rolling so well, we've got our blinkers on. We're almost in this autopilot, aren't we? Just yeah. kind of cruising yeah, along, that's exactly what arm it is. You out the door. Routine, you don't even really need <laughs> Think about what you're doing next because you just automatically do it. Exactly. Yeah. It's like when you're driving in your car and you go the same way so many times. Yeah. You you don't even think about it. Yeah. That's so true. You just you get to work and you go. Oh, I don't How remember I getting get here. here. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like you black out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They call it a waking sleep. 
Yeah. So you're awake, but your brain's asleep. And, you know, if we go back to, you know, looking at neuroscience, um, research shows us that half of our thoughts, we have 50,000 thoughts a day, half of them are, um, you know, are repetitive and it's um, are, are wandering. Sorry, 90% are repetitive. Half of them are wandering. So we're not even present. We're not even here. We're worrying about yesterday or thinking about tomorrow or what we're going to have for lunch or how we, you know, replay conversation perhaps didn't go our way and what we're not actually yeah always thinking about <laughs> the, yeah, the <laughs> how you'd replay thing. something yeah yeah. yeah yeah it's really normal to ruminate over things so ikigai so it's a great time to actually be looking at you know discovering your purpose and what I love about ikigai is it's just a really snug I love frameworks you know just having something you can grab onto you know <laughs> Take it and then, you know, just help yourself to be able to actually navigate it. It's four really um, clear questions or four, you know, clear areas. Two are super easy to answer and two are difficult. So really challenging. They are, aren't yeah, they? I've really struggled with Lucy's them. been actively working on this this year, which has been wonderful. I've told her that I know her icky guy, but I'm not going to tell her what it is. Yeah, and I really <laughs> want to know because I don't even know it myself. You've got, the thing is, as well, and Lucy's a great idea, when you've got so many areas and so many passions, it can be, you know, it can take you a while to filter through it. But that's the great thing. You've got so many choices and opportunities. Yeah. You know, I tend to change my mind a lot as well. And one day I think, oh, oh, it could be this. And then the next day I think, oh, no, I love this so much. Like it could be this as well. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. And that's when I said, you know, when you rank them, then you start to get a bit more of a feel yeah. to get into it deeper. But anyway, let's not skip ahead. Um, before we start, I'd love this to be an interactive workshop. We so can ask even if it's outside of your comfort zone um, if you can participate by commenting when we're asking these questions just with the first thing that comes to mind in the comments um, and uh, and then we can all engage in this together because it's a lot of fun um, but before we start um, I wanted to talk to you about a story that really changed the course of my life and helped me find my ikigai some of you will know this if you've seen my ikigai workshop earlier in the year some of you won't um, but essentially I want to take you to a little Japanese island that you may have heard of called Okinawa and it's in the south of Japan it's beautiful it's got an island off it called Ishigaki Jima which means star sand star sand island and every sand molecule you, you'd see you put it in your hand was shaped like a little star it's so cute anyway that's besides the point it's beautiful <laughs> it's really pretty down there I just want to say it's really pretty down there and I finished university in Japan many moons ago well not that long ago you know just a few years ago uh, and uh, did my final year there so I was in Japan in my early 20s and I went to this island I was living in Tokyo and studying Japanese finishing off my Japanese papers and I got to go to Okinawa and I was so excited going down there I thought oh well, I'm just going to spend my time on the beaches and discovering the island but what took my fascination and was such a turning point in my life was discovering that it was a blue zone so have you heard of blue zones in the world do you know some of the comment if you know some of the blue zones around the world because there's seven other countries that have them and basically what unites these blue Zones. and what really intrigues scientists is in these places they have more um, now I the, the name always fails me it's not you know what are those people called centurions people that are over a hundred that have yeah. lived over a hundred than anywhere else in the world so they unpick you know the reasons behind this and in Japan what I was told and what I came to know is it's because they're an island that lives by the ikigai Everyone is joyful. They have, it's filled with these people. I, I remember, you know, my early 20 eyes, just looking at these people with blue rinses and purple rinses running around the island, just being deliriously happy. And there went, you know, so many generations of family. There was this beautiful sense of community and it was very, very joyful light. And everyone called each other, oh, this is my grandchild, but they weren't related. Mm -hmm. So it was just this real foster of community and, um, the sense of belonging there, which was beautiful. And I was like, well, I want to find my icky guy. What's this icky guy thing? So this is what I studied when I was at university and did a lot of research around. 
and spent a year living to find mine. I thought that um, I would find it in the corporate sector. So I spent many years, for those that you know, know my story will know this, but pursuing a passion, which was a passion of mine, which is one of the areas of Ikigai. To get your Ikigai, you have to get four areas, and we'll come on to that soon. But I thought it would be, you know, I, I loved marketing. It allowed me to be creative. I certainly loved the social life around marketing and flying all around the world for these amazing brands and doing all these fashion events and trade shows, etc. But at some point, I felt like I was trading my happiness and all of this energy and effort that I was putting into something for something that didn't actually fill me up. And the quiet of the night or on those Fridays where I've given everything to work I would come home and feel disconnected I'd feel lonely like I was lacking something and it got to a point where my health started to suffer as well so I had to make that painful decision that actually this wasn't my ikigai this wasn't my purpose and it came in the form of me realizing that I was comparing my life to others on social media and I would see them jetting around the world doing all of these cool things and I realized that somewhere along the way I'd lost my passion for life and believing something that was so intrinsic in my identity, which is a belief that the world is my oyster. I can achieve and do anything. I've always thought that my entire life. And here I was sitting in this corporate office. I think I was actually working a weekend then because, you know, I wanted to get ahead. So I thought it was the right thing to do and wondering why I felt so disconnected from my life. Well, all of it was about work. Um, and you may have seen a blog that I wrote recently which talked about, you know, the day I realized my ladder was leaning against the wrong wall and that was it. I realized that something had to change and so I started looking for things that did light me up and I started going through these questions and, you know, turning back to the framework that I knew worked in terms of understanding what my strengths were but also what did my market need? What problem could I solve through doing something that was a marrying my strengths and my passion, and how could I get paid for it too? So that started my quest to where I am today. And I can honestly say, when you find your ikigai and when you click into knowing what you're here to do <clears throat> and what you love doing, the world opens up. All these possibilities open up and you have such a strong sense of commitment and purpose. You know it's so intrinsic in you in terms of what your work is for, why you are here, what your why is. I'm sure many of you have heard of Simon Sinek who talks about finding your why. When you understand your why and, and your ikigai, everything else makes sense and it becomes really clear and really easy on how to make decisions because you just re resort back to it. Does it help me with my ikigai or doesn't it? Is it on purpose or is it off purpose? If it's off purpose, why am I doing it? I'm just killing time, I'm procrastinating. What's going on here? And you dig a little bit deeper into what you're actually doing. Um, <clears throat> so I can't wait to share this with you ladies. And um, I'd love to know, does anyone that's listening at the moment think that they might have the icky guy or experience at a different time? <clears throat> Do you have any questions for the session before we delve into the actual framework and start you know, going through like some of the questions that will help you discover yours. Let us know. I have a little look now. Uh, hey, Anne Marie, nice to see you. Oh, but I had to Google what it was. Awesome. <laughs> Shari, you're in Greece. Oh, my goodness, that's awesome. Shari in Greece, wow. Hey, I'm from Kukaran in Western Australia. Hi, Pip. Lovely to see you. Oh, Victoria, I'm so pleased you joined us again. I wasn't sure after my very, very long workshop on self-sabotage. <laughs> Good on you for being the diligent pupil. I love that. That's awesome. We've got Nat from Victoria. Hi, from Melbourne. Okay, great. Don't have it with you. Hi, Sandy. How you going? Okay, well, shall we dive into this? I have a question. Okay. Is there anything you think that you can do to, to make finding the answers easier? 
Yeah, I think um, one of the things is just going through methodically through these different questions and okay. asking questions behind the questions, which we'll go through now, yeah. which will help with that. But then after we've done the exercise, there's definitely some stuff that um, we can do to help bring it to life more. Okay. So we can go through that. Yeah. So ladies, let's go and have a look at this board. Can you show the ladies the board? Okay, great. Let's have a look what this icky guy stuff is all about, shall we? Okay. So here is the emergence of four areas, essentially. So this is where your icky guy resides, which is in the overlap between all of them. Often what people misattribute to their reason for being is their passion. So, you know, what are you good at and what do you love? That's your passion. So many people just stop here. But your ikigai is so much more than this. It's something that makes you feel of service to the world. And it doesn't mean to be the world as a whole. I think people often get trapped in that area of thinking, does it need to be something that all the world needs? No, think back to Okinawa and my example there. It just needs to be something on a community level that helps to solve a problem because that's where you get that feeling of purpose. And purpose is a core component of Ikigai because we all like to feel at a deep level that we're benefiting others, that we're making others' lives easier. It makes us feel good to be of service to others. So there's that kind of exchange. So it's a fundamental part of Ikigai. So what do you love doing? This is one of the first questions. It's so easy, right? We know what we love doing. Can you drop in the comments below some of the things, or well, the first thing that comes to your head that you absolutely love? You could do it, say, if you were asked to speak on something without any time to plan for 10 minutes and you would be okay to confidently speak about this thing that was an absolute love of yours, something that you're hugely passionate about. Please put, um, put that down in the comments below. So could that be something that you never get bored of? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then think, what are you good at? So what's something that is a strength of yours? And when those two overlap, because you often find that you tend to gravitate towards doing things that you're good at, right? You don't gravitate towards things that you're bad at. Um, maybe at the start you do, but often we are creatures of comfort. We're creatures of habit. We tend to sort of stick to the things that we know we're good at and that we enjoy doing. Then you get into the trickier questions, which we're going to workshop in a second. But that is, um, what is what the world needs. So again, at a global at a global level, at a community level, or thinking about the market that you want to be in, what do they need? Does, does the world need parents that can sleep well? You know, a sleep consultant. Does the world need kids to be fit and active? A sports coach. Does the world need alternative medicine? Um, does, so a holistic doctor, for example. Does the world need more music? You know, an online music course, there's so many different vocations, but you can just break it down in terms of, you know, on that more community-based level, what does your ikigai solve? What problem does it solve in the world? And then, and most important, because this is the difference between something being a hobby and actually being an ikigai, which is something which actually sustains your living because you're being paid for it, how can you get paid for it? So it's the overlap of all of these areas. Uh, the, something I'm great at, something that I really love doing, it makes my heart beat faster, something I can get paid for, it solves a problem in my community, and something that I can actually get paid for too. Otherwise, if it's just, say, what the world needs and what you can get paid for, it's just a vocation. Or if it's, you know, what you're good at and what you can get paid for, it's just a profession if you don't love it and the world doesn't need it. Um, so you can sort of see here, you know, or passion. If you're just sticking to what you love and what you're good at, it's a passion. Or if it's what you love and what the world needs, it's charity work, right? It's just a mission. So Ikigai is the combination of all four of these things. So together, it brings that power and that flow into what you do on a day-to-day -day -day basis. Does that make sense? Let me know if you've got any questions around that because now we're going to go in and workshop that. So yeah. Okay, let's see if there are any questions here. Oh, I'm liking some of these answers, ladies. Frankie, you have to do yours. <laughs> 
Frankie, put it on. <laughs> Vicky, hi Vicky, nice to see you. Working with children, nice, beautiful. Helping people with addictions, oh that's awesome Victoria. Ooh, sailing and skinny diving. Ooh, I like Sound those. Back. Writing, Emery, of course, I knew you'd say that one. <laughs> Nat, gym, baking, gardening, sewing, I have too many. It's great, isn't it? Because you start, you know, thinking in that realm, you know, our answers are always as good as our questions, right? And we often don't ask ourselves these questions. And when you, you don't know what lies inside you until you sit with that for a while. Yeah, I have a see lot what as comes well. Up a lot I had a lot but then when you really like look at them when they're actually written down and you can see them then you start to realize as well which ones are just hobbies and which ones maybe you yes. would like to do for work yeah yeah, yeah. so it's, it's good to awesome. have a lot because then it you have is. lots of options yeah it's always like when you're brainstorming right ladies you've got the top of the funnel you want it to be full with as many things as possible and that's why we always start with the easiest areas and then start to layer in those harder questions because we go down the funnel and start Filtering. Yeah. Yeah. Picking the, the odd ones out. Oh, Ginny, that's beautiful topics to talk about. Benefits of kindness and gratitude. They're obviously core cool values of yours, which is awesome to know. Frankie, yoga, meditation and Reiki. Oh, good. Thank you for partaking <laughs> there, Frankie. What are some of those words? Great. Awesome, ladies. Lovely to see. Okay, so what we need to do now is, does everyone have a bit of paper in front of them? If you, if you don't, you want to just go and get a little bit of paper and a pen at the moment, because we're going to go through a series of questions that Lucy and I are going to ask you, so you can start beginning to figure this out. Um, as we said, it, these are the four fundamental questions we've got, and Lucy and I have just got some more exploratory questions that we can ask underneath, which has helped us with different clients get to the icky guy so we're going to run through those with you so just take a minute now to get yourself comfortable to get a pen to get a bit of paper and do that and we'll go through into those areas <clears throat> and remember for each of these areas we're going to ask you guys to be interactive and just when you've done start dropping in some of those comments down below too All right, let us know when you're back. Abigail, connecting people, conserving natural environment and learning. Beautiful. There's some good telltale options there. So ladies, let's go through the first question. And um, just simply if you write up, what do you love? And just think about, answer all of the questions, you know, or, um, answer anything that comes to mind underneath this so you know something that never bores you no matter how long you do it something if you didn't get paid for it you would still do it yeah I think that it's still a, enjoy yeah do you would you say that yeah like I said before it's something that you would never ever get bored of no matter how long you were doing it and time yeah. just passed really really fast absolutely yeah. you know when you've had those days where you get so into the flow that you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that two hours has gone by. Yeah. You know, you tune out all of the distractions because you're so focused and you're so in that moment. Yeah, yeah. What do you do that with? Um, I get that with editing. Oh, no. Oh, you love your editing. I do, yeah. I'm glad you do that with editing. <laughs> <laughs> because you get so into it, you get so focused, you get so in the zone, and then you start realizing, because you can get so creative with it as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and then you start to discover new things that you can do. So it, it's really, like, it gets kind of exciting, you yeah. know? But then, you know, you're sitting in front of a computer and you're like, yeah. oh, my gosh, my eyes. Oh, yeah, oh, you're oh, like, how many hours <laughs> is yeah, this? Yeah, you need to kind of, like, oh my give God. yourself little breaks in between. Do you know a weird one that I have? I've got two weird ones. Because we'll have weird ones. Ladies, put some weird ones down below. I'll share two of mine. One is I'm obsessed with maps. When I lived in London, I would study that underground tube map. That would be my fun reading because I wanted to just memorize all of it. So I just love maps and knowing 
where things are and I'll just look at it for hours and hours yeah. and the other thing is even with geography as well like well yeah like that, yeah. yeah I just love knowing where things are I used to have this game when I was little which was airports I don't know if anyone's got that airport game and you'd learn all the different capital cities and stuff that you'd fly into and the other one is boating magazines so since I was probably about early 20s I could just read boating magazines and the specs and again the layout so what are the specs on a boat and again kind of like a map I guess it's the same sort of thing yeah because it is a yeah it is yeah. a map yeah yeah so interesting Trent was stoked when he met but me you like boats though I love you? boats yeah. yeah and I love just imagining oh I wonder what that cabin's like and but it's also the engine room yeah anyway that's <clears throat> Those are two of my weird, my weird um, passions. Ladies, let us know what yours are below. Drop those below. Has anyone wrote anything? Let's have a look. Yeah, should we leave that up? And then the second question is, and again, easy, what are you good at? So, you know, you'd think it's easy, and it is most of the time, but often we can also have unrecognized strengths, can't we? <laughs> Unrecognized strengths. Yes. strengths. <laughs> there was, I know we one of yours. About this the other day. Yeah, because we don't always know what we're good at. And um, for me, one of those big things was management and leadership. So when I first started working at Escape Haven three years ago, um, Janine and Trent offered me the, the management position, and I was kind of like, oh, really? <laughs> I was like, you want me to be the manager? And they were like, yeah, we want you to be the manager. You're going to be good at it. We and, could see um, she would be an amazing manager and leader in the business. Yeah, and it turned out that I was I was good at it and I really enjoyed it. And I think because they kind of like pushed me outside my comfort zone. And um, yeah, it made me really want to succeed in it. Because yeah. you, it's nice as well when you see that somebody else sees that something in you that you don't even see yourself. Um, it makes you really want to succeed with it as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think that's the thing. Sometimes we have those blocks where we can't see something in ourselves, but friends can or colleagues can or managers can, and they can spot those things. Yeah. And so with your strengths, also when you're looking at this, think about things that people come to you for advice on. Yeah, so almost like your, um, your genius zone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a great way of describing it. What's your genius zone? What are you known for? You know, when you've got friends that come to you for something, what is it that they come to you? Why do they come to you for advice? Is it on a specific thing or is it because of a specific quality you have or a specific way in which you see things? So if you're a bit stuck here on strengths, like I'm sure you can already list a few and please put them in the comments below. We'd love to hear some of those strengths that you have, but dig a little bit deeper by looking through that lens. So. You know, what are friends and colleagues and family members often seek out my opinion on? What are things that I've been recognized in the past for? Or what are some of those things that I didn't agree with that people saw in me? Because there's something in that too, and that could be an unrecognized strength. Yeah, and it, it, yeah, it, it definitely is. And you do start to notice it after a while when people comment on things. Yes. For me, fitness was a big one. Yeah. Because I was good at it and I yeah. always worked so hard at it. Yeah. People would always ask me questions about fitness. Yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So ladies, have you got a bit of a list going with that? Let's have a look if there's any comments, etc. Listening, being outside, traveling, shopping, fashion photography, being out outdoors, especially beach, underwater photography. Oh, I was just looking at that one. Gardening, That's cooking, good. talking, being outdoors, gardening, sport, yoga, being with family and friends. Janine, what were the four words surrounding ikigai on the sheet? I only caught compassion. Shara, so basically the four words surrounding it is passion. So when what, um, what you love merges with what you're good at, that's your passion. When what you're good at merges with what you can get paid for, that's your profession. So you know, I'm good at marketing and I get paid for it. That's my profession. And when what you can get paid for merges with what the world needs that's your vocation so i can get paid for it and the world needs it um so you know it's something that you know i'm doing of service and i'm getting paid for it at the same time however what the world needs when that merges with what you love that's your mission so you know charity work you're doing charity work that you're really really um passionate about and then when all four of those worlds collide that's your ikigai so it gives you passion 
it gives you purpose, it merges your strengths, and you can sustain a living from it. And it fills a need, it gives a solution to the world or to your community. So it just creates that deep meaning and fulfillment and contentment. Without one of the areas, you don't have that. Can you see if you peeled back passion? I'm not passionate about it. But yeah, the world needs it, and yeah, I get paid for it, and yeah, it's a strength, but I don't love it. You're never going to feel fulfilled that way. Or say, you know, you love it, it's a strength, and the world needs it, but you don't get paid for it. Hey, I'm just doing charity work, and that's great, but if it's your main hustle, then, you know, you're not going to be able to sustain a living doing that, so you're going to cause issues um, downstream. Or if you are really passionate about it, you get paid for it, and the world needs it, yet it's not a strength, at some point, you know, probably the imposter syndrome is going to come up, or you're going to sabotage yourself because you're not going to feel worthy, or you're not going to be able to continue with that role because you don't shine in it, even though you love it. You know, for those that listened to my first guy, that was karaoke in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> used to get asked to um, sing karaoke a lot and I was really really bad at it actually I don't think the world needed it though <laughs> <laughs> anyway I digress lots of beautiful stuff coming through here ladies in terms of what you're saying being involved in community yeah I know that's a big one for you purpose in it playing sports the club laughing listening loyalty fantastic you're getting a really great sense of that. What I'd love you ladies to do as an exercise after this, um, at some point, is to ask your friends and family, you know, ones that are supportive, obviously, but ask friends and family, hey, well, what are some of my strengths? What are some things that you notice about me or that you seek advice from me on? What are some things that you can imagine, you know, me really shining at? Because we have, again, a certain perception of how we see ourselves for those that listen to the self-sabotage workshop that we ran just before this. You know, we talk about the filters that we had. We have a preconceived identity that we live out on a day-to-day -day basis. Someone might see us completely differently. So to get that full perspective of our strengths, reach out to others, ask others and see what they come up to and add to this list. Because remember this exercise we're doing is a work in progress. It took me 11 years to find my ikigai. I'm not expecting you to do it after the session. We have had women this year, which has been amazing, find the icky guy, but it takes work. So let's move to the next question. These are the hard two. Yes, <laughs> these are the harder two. What's the next one, Lucy? What does the, oh, what can I get paid for? Yes, what yeah. can you get paid for? And that's where you have to really get your creative hat on, isn't mm -hmm. it? Because there's so many things you could get paid for. Like yeah. you can get paid for being a shop assistant you know yeah. you can get paid for everything pretty much yeah. but it's what what do you want to get paid for i guess yes yeah so exactly what's taking those two lists that you had before and go what do i love what's my passion and looking at those lists what could i get paid for the great thing about, you know 2020 and this modern era of technology there's this huge emergence in the online world, people are going from physical office spaces where they're sharing their genius zone to creating online courses, to doing podcasts, to creating online media channels and becoming writers and um, authors you know, of online books, not having to spend hundreds of thousands of doing a big book publicity tour to get their message out or their passion out into the world. There are literally so many options open and available to you. I remember when I moved to Bali 13 years ago, there was a handful of expats because to live here, you had to have a business. Mm -hmm. Now we have, we're inundated, gosh, how many expats? Must hundreds of thousands that are digital nomads. And I think, good on you, this is amazing, this whole upswing of this ability to create incomes and jobs across a whole realm of diverse um, categories through doing it in the comfort of your own home or doing it remotely, traveling and still being able to work. Long gone are the days of having to work from an office or doing nine to five. Yeah. It's great doing that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's amazing. There's so many benefits to doing that, but there's other options now. Well, and these beautiful um, co-working spaces here yes. where all the working nomads can go. Yeah. yeah, it's great. And so many brands around the world that service this market. Yeah. So what I love is just seeing people that have found, like Lucy said, I love that word that you used before, genius zone. They've started to tap into thinking, well, what is my genius zone? What am I passionate about? What am I really good at? And what do I want to share the, with the world? 
and thinking about that genius zone and going, well, okay, what kind of industries could that fall within? What kind of business could I do? What kind of role could I have within a business? And just start thinking about it. One of the key things you could do is think about, you know, those areas that you have passions in and interests in. Who are people that are doing really well in those areas? Start looking at what they're doing and getting a sense of the different types of jobs and businesses and roles there are around there. Because if you can dream it, there will be something there for you. You know, it's just about starting that investigation, putting on that Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes hat getting really curious with it. That's the whole thing about Ikigai. I always say, just get so curious about it. Don't make up your mind about anything. Be really loose, be really kind of like agile with it and just go on this quest, you know, for discovery. Because the more that you're open to it, the more you'll see. Remember when we we're talking about neuroscience before? I always love going back to neuroscience, <laughs> don't I? I'm always hearing myself go, remember what we said with neuroscience before? But really, like there's so much understanding brain to get success and you know so much of that comes down to we're so we've got our blinkers on 90% of our thoughts it's it's statistically proven um, are repetitive thoughts every single day we have the same thoughts and they replay over and over and over and over again so unless we're doing something new, stepping out and trying different things, learning a new language, you don't have to go and learn a whole new language, but listening to a podcast. Every day I try to um, do something new. I call it exposure to the new is one of my brand values. I used to work for a business in London. I, I stole that from somewhere, by the way. I used to work at Selfridges, um, running their marketing and loyalty many years ago in London, and that was our brand value, exposure to the new always looking at new boundaries, new frontiers, and how to break them. And that's the same thing, like a quest for learning, a thirst and a desire to discover uncharted waters that I haven't been exposed to before. Because heck, I don't want to have 90% of the same thoughts every day. Mm -hmm. Imagine if you do that, your ship is going to end up in the same port time and time and time again. And it's going to make this discovery really like, unproductive. So give yourself permission. And again, another challenge I'll set you ladies, because I challenges today is think about how you're going to sail that ship out of the harbour where are you going to go what are these new things you're going to expose yourself to pick one is it a podcast you're going to listen to is it a book you're going to read is it um, some articles you're going to read uh, you know a blog on someone um, and whether you like to actually read or listen there's something for everyone is it a new sport you're going to try is it a new class at the gym perhaps you're going to is it um, making sure that you're meeting up with someone on a regular basis, but different friends that perhaps you haven't seen for a while? Is it driving a different way to work? Is it brushing your teeth with a different hand? The more you do this, the more you're opening your brain up to different possibilities. And again, just thinking about it from that capacity, once you start throwing off the blinkers and trying new things, your brain, remember we've got 50,000 thoughts on average a day, they're filtered. So when you start opening up these new neural pathways of discovery and learning new things, your brain will start filtering experiences that are in alignment with that because your brain likes alignment. It likes things that match in terms of what you're thinking and what you're believing and what you're discovering. So, you know, the gateway to this is really trying as many new things as possible and as many new ways as you can think of. I'd love to hear your thoughts below on some of the new things you can commit to. Just one or two would be great. But what new thing can you commit to doing this week? It can be small, it can be big. You know, go crazy, get creative, wow us with some ideas here, ladies. What are you going to do, Lucy? I'm going to put you on. What new thing well, are you going to do this I week? Do, there's something that I do try to do every day I always try to set aside a little bit of time for reading yes yeah because, you're great with your reading because that um you know it fills my mind with something yeah it, puts, it actually puts me in a good mood because it makes mm. me feel like I'm I'm filling my brain with something like positive you yes know? Yeah, yeah like new information yeah, yeah. no you're Even great with all your courses hour, mm. and I set my alarm on my phone mm. especially like if I'm busy you know and sometimes even when it goes off if I feel like I want to stay and keep reading, then I will. And then other yeah. times I'll, I'll stop and keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. Nice. Like so you get it through ritual. reading. Yeah, yeah. What else could you do that's new? For me? Yeah. 
it could be um, something that I've actually been wanting to do and been procrastinating. <laughs> setting up a little um, meditation space in my spare room. Oh, great. Did you hear that, Frankie? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie's just behind the camera. Wow. You'll because have to I share it with our inner circle girls. Yeah. You'll have to take a photo of it and share yeah, it with yeah, them. Because I could, yeah, I got it from, you know, all the inner circle stuff and then also the, the breath work, the meditation and breath yeah. work coach training um, just to set up that little space. So it's already set up. You don't have to ever worry about doing yeah. it. And then every day, even if you don't have time to sit down for, maybe you don't have time to sit down to meditate for 20 minutes, okay. but even if you just visit that space for five minutes, yeah, at least once during the day, then it means that you've done it yes. and it helps you to get into that habit of doing it. Nice. Yeah. I like yeah. it. And I've been wanting to do that and I haven't done it yet. That's okay. <laughs> The intentions there. So you're going to do it this week, and you're going to share a photo share with the group, photo. aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things that I've been doing, which has been good this year, obviously this year has just allowed so much time for self development, which is you know so interesting. And under this um, you know veil of exposure to the new, I try to learn something new every day. So I have a whole number of authors that I really love. I'm listening to a lot of the work by Joe Dispenza at the moment. Has anyone heard of him? So he talks a lot about epigenetics. And okay. how we can really I haven't heard of him. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible to how we really can rewire our, our brains for success and change the way we think by raising our um energy raising our energetic levels and uh, operating from a place of a gratitude. Podcast? Um he's got a lot of stuff on YouTube. So I like to I do the five AM club, so I've got a big screen TV. Yeah. So I'll select one of the girls' classes off YouTube, um, and also I love Les Mills Body Jam, so I've been doing that as, as well as Lucy's fitness classes. And then you do 20 um, practices, so I'll just do my own breath work or one of Frankie's meditation, and then I do 20 minutes, which is all about, so it's based on the 5am club, Robin Sharma, I don't know if any of you have heard of Robin Sharma, um, but then 20 minutes of really priming your brain for success for that day so it can e either be visualization mm -hmm. so visualizing what does success look like today what would be symbolic of me having a successful day and then really tapping into that um, or listening to something new so I just pull up his stuff on YouTube and listen to it mm -hmm. and I also love Goop as well you know oh, Gwyneth Paltrow's Goops it's all sorts of crazy they're always on the frontier new frontier for cool new therapies Victoria, she said, go for my first swim of the season. Oh, that'd be chilly back home. That would yeah, be beautiful. Like, mm, question mark. <laughs> Marie, the 5 a.m. Club is this incredible book by Robin Sharma, and a lot of us at work read it. And it's based on the principle that to prime your brain for you know life success, you need to be really disciplined in terms of um the rituals that you have so it's getting up at 5 a.m or getting up at 4 30 or i got up this morning at four i was like oh, i'm gonna sleep until at least 4 45 this morning i was like no i dreamed i was doing isn't this funny just this is another story aside sorry i dreamed i was doing a cooking workshop for the mini escape and then i was like oh no i haven't prepared for it and it was some beetroot dip and i didn't have any beetroots because you have to be prepared for that yeah. <laughs> Anyway, random, random. Yeah, so I um, hope that memory in terms of what it is, but, but have a look at his stuff. It's incredible, and I highly recommend that book. It's been a real game changer for me this year, giving me a huge amount of energy. So, yeah, I wake up at 4, between 4 and 4.30 every day and go to sleep, though. The bad thing is go to sleep at 7.30 or 8, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I okay, prefer though. to go a little bit later. I know, you're getting your eight hours, yeah. which is great, really great. Um, I did a degree in brain development in 2018. Super interesting. Oh, Nat, you're so lucky. Gosh, I would love to do that. It's so interesting, the whole neuroplasticity. I can't believe it's just such a recent discovery in the last decade. Uh, Sandy, I love Joe Dispenza. Isn't he amazing? Really enjoying this. The brain is buzzing. Oh, good, Ginny. I'm glad you are. Great. Thank you, Shara. Being awesome. All right, ladies. So I got off a little bit off track there. So that was, what can I get paid for? Yeah. So really looking again, what would you be doing if you weren't doing your current job? Just thinking about those things that you really love and that you're strong in. And what do you want to share with the world as well? It's a good question. What is it that you have, these gifts that you have? We all have a gift. We all have a genius zone. We all have something 
that you know is our divine right to share with people because you're an expert in that area can become an expert in that area so really delve into that with those questions um, and then read. and this is where people can get really stumped isn't it yeah I was gonna say does it have to be does it have to be at a global level no just at a community level so what problem does it solve at a community level so thinking about those um, you know centurions in Japan um, you know, they didn't set the world on fire. They just did something on a community basis, whether it was a ramen shop. I found what they were doing was just very locally based things, you know, having a crèche with kids. There was a strong connection between, um, you know, grandmothers, obasans, they were called great, 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 great grandmothers and, and children, mm -hmm. you know, and they had a lot of the crèches and nursing homes yeah. as well. There were all sorts of really cool stuff they were doing there, but it was certainly just on a community level, not yeah. on a global level. And if you think of my guy, which is positively impacting women, the problem that was solving was just being able to transform their lives through having a retreat. You know, that wasn't something that's on a global level. It is for a global audience, but that's female. And that was for a certain type of female, which was a very successful woman that was interested in well-being, health and well-being, and um, had that courage to go and venture to a third world country, Bali, and, and come on a luxury retreat. Yeah, so it doesn't necessarily have to be relevant to everybody either. No. It's just who you want it to be relative to. Yes, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't have to be broad like that. It can be very niche so for example maybe it's you know um god maybe it's i i want to be um a um oh gosh i think some real crazy stuff then <laughs> around fish um it could be you know maybe i'm going to be a specialist and um on fish and and um teaching teaching kids about marine biology you know, or maybe I'm going to be a meditation teacher that just specializes in kids with special needs, you know, allowing them to, or adopt children that might have fear of abandonment and allowing them to really tap into those feelings of self-love and dissolve those abandonment issues they have. Or maybe it is, you know, like one of our inner circle girls, Beth, she's a doctor and she discovered her guy earlier in the year about holistic health and alternative medicine. There are literally the world is your oyster. There are so many opportunities and ideas around what the world needs. The world needs people to become their best version. The world needs people that are inspired and motivated to go after their goals, to live in supreme health, to have love in their hearts, to overcome issues that plague them and to, you know, to support one another. You can go a million miles with that and in every direction. And all you need to do is to put your genius onto that in terms of payment around that industry around that business idea around that job around that you don't have to start your own business you can do it as a role within someone's business but it's just finding those it's seeking those when you actually look at it from that perspective for this last question around what the world needs by thinking well what problem does it solve I care about that problem because you have to be deeply committed to that problem that it solves. My why? Positively helping women, you know, positively impacting women become their best version. I'm so deeply committed to that. Our brand, our retreat is all built around that. We are so customer centric in everything we do because of that. So it has to really mean something to you. Otherwise, it's you're just going back to, again, something that you're just going to burn out and all that's not going to give you beautiful flow and I can't even describe the difference from when I went from that corporate role putting in a huge amount of energy to something that I created that really really deeply cared about you just get this huge surge of limitless energy and you find your flow and you feel so committed to what you're doing because you know that you're living on purpose decisions as I was saying before are easy to make you understand your values and it's really good to look at values when you're going through this too. Again, what does the world need? Pull up your values list. If you haven't done your values before, have a look at some of our previous mini-scapes and have a look at those value lists and really dig into what matters to me, what defines who I am. This year, if it's taught us nothing, it's taught us, it sure as heck's taught us what our values are. 
because we can intellectualize and have this whole list of values. Oh, I'm this, I'm this, I believe in this, I believe in that. Well, what happens when everything falls apart? Do you operate by those values? And I've seen the best and worst in people this year. And it's been so crystal clear to me what people's values are based upon how they have shown up this year. And so check out those lists, tap into, you know, really understanding with those values. Do when they're pressure tested, like, like this year, you know, like this year has caused them to be, do they still hold true to you? And those should be in alignment with the problem that you're solving too, because then it's direct alignment between the two. And that's important. Um, now that you've got those, can you think of, can you just to help one another, can you just jot down a few in terms of what the world needs um, and see if you can help anyone else out? Because this is a tricky question in terms of what the world needs. And then ladies, what you want to get to while you're doing that is just where is their overlap? So one of the things we've done before, eh Lucy, that's really helpful is just having, so you can just have it mapped like this or you can have it just in four and just have sticky notes. We had sticky notes in different colours because then, you know, it's fluid because this is whole fluid, creative, beautiful, light, fluffy, fun process. You want to keep it light and fluffy and fun to keep the energy high. So just use your stickers because we want you to keep going back to this. We're not expecting you to discover it now. If you have, we want to hear about it. If you need help, we'd love to answer your questions related to it. But keep coming back to this because it should be a live process where you're testing out different things. Remember, we're encouraging you to try new things when you're looking at what you love. We're encouraging you to speak to friends when you're recognizing what your strengths are and uncovering some strengths that perhaps were unrecognized with you. We're encouraging you to look for people that are already making money doing things that are your strengths and your passions. What are they doing? How did they get there? Reaching out to those people, doing some detective work around it, being inspired by them, getting coaching, doing courses. You know, any of those things that gets the mind buzzing and ticking over so you're absorbing this information. And we're encouraging you to start thinking about your values and looking at those in terms of what the world needs. So it's still a work in progress, you know. There's many things that we want you to still continue journeying with as you go through this. So just think about now, how could you frame this up for yourself so it is a live document? Would it be in a journal? For example, could you have a vision board? So Lucy had a vision board, which yeah. was cool. Yeah, I still have it at home. Oh, good. We did it here. Yeah, we did do it here, didn't yeah. we? We did it on the workshop. You know, whatever form that might take, think about what equipment you'll need, think about what it's going to look like, think about where you're going to have it, because what we don't want at the end of this workshop is for you to close the book and go, oh, okay, oh, that's right, I did that Ikigai workshop once. What happens next is most important. We've just told you some of the ideas behind it. We've just started the clogs turning in the wheel. What we want now is for you to do the work and we want to hear about you doing the work as well. Uh, let me just see, there was something else I was wanting to share. Do you want it to- It is interesting to see some of your overlaps. Yeah. Is this an art? What did yeah. you find when you were discovering that? Oh, I just found that my my main overlaps would always be to do with um, photos and videos and content creating um, and helping women to transform their lives yeah. and being of service to others because I've always loved hospitality. Oh my gosh, my dog, relentless dog, is scratching to get no, in the door. To open the door. No, Roxy, go away. <laughs> <laughs> she was doing it at 1 a.m. this morning. My husband has like built up this dependency of our animals on us. And he wonders why like everyone, the entire family is dependent on him. Daddy, 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 including the dogs. I'm like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, just because I always loved hospitality. Yeah. But um, not so much. It, it, I wanted it to be to do with wellness yeah. and helping others to transform their so lives. So that meaningful yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, meaningful part to it, not just, um, you know, working in a hotel or something yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. 
So for me, that was very important. And I did notice that that was one of my, my overlaps. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Interesting. So now it's just that commercial part yeah. around and then defining that a little bit more. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Because then it can be very broad as well when you yeah. think about it. So you really yeah. need to like narrow it down. The good thing about it being broad is there are so many possibilities and options. Mm -hmm. So it's actually good if it's broad. If it's niche, it's really clear. If it's broad, you've got lots of paths you can go down. But then I get so confused. <laughs> but that's where you know how saying rank them that's where it can be good to really tune into, okay, well, what am I most passionate about? What am I really committed to? What's in alignment with my value the most, my core value, the value that's most important to me? You know, and you just start, like you do in that kind of brainstorm, you just start filtering it by more questions and then starting yeah. to then rank them, rank and stack them. Mm -hmm. And that's how you'll get down to... Yeah, because some, yeah, because even your overlaps, you know, some of them are very similar, but then some of them can be completely different. Yeah. Yeah, that's when you really need to separate them. Yeah. And think, okay, well, this is completely different to that, so I can't do them together. Yeah. And, you know, you want to just have one thing that you're really, really good at. Yes. What, what you can get paid for. And, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And some other um, things that we advise as well, ladies, is answers come and clarity comes from a still mind. So... So often on retreat, we have women, don't we, that come to us with burning questions they want to answer, big, massive questions. And it's very difficult to come up with answers. We've got all the answers, by the way, inside us. You don't need to come to Bali to find them. Your retreat is within you. They call it equanimity in, in yoga. And it's basically the part of you that in a, a peacefully um, observes and is conscious of all of your thoughts and everything that's going on it's apart from them it's your infinite wisdom within you and the more still we can become the more we can tap into that. on retreat women have huge breakthroughs by the end of retreat they know whether it's the right relationship or marriage for them they know whether to go after that job or leave a current one they know about moving countries or not there's always something huge that often mm -hmm. follows a retreat isn't it yeah but what if you can't travel right now yeah, no, no, I mean, you don't, you don't need to come to a retreat to do it. You've got the answers within yeah, you. So okay. just, so just um, look, tapping into yeah. it. Yeah, tapping into it with meditation, with rituals. breath work. Yeah, those daily rituals. Being able to journal is fantastic. But just stillness practices, start incorporating those as well. Often when we're in this busy world of trying to achieve, we don't allow us to. We sabotage ourselves to because we might have a belief that, we can't slow down. If we slow down, the wheels will fall off. But actually, and you might have seen a blog I wrote recently, you know, we slow down so we can speed up. It makes us more successful by having these stillness practices. Any business on any person that's had huge success, all have incredibly powerful rituals like this with stillness practices because from that, creativity happens and also wisdom happens. When we're so into doing the whole time, we can't just be. And that's what those things allow us to do. So just make sure that you have time in your day to do those practices so you can find those answers. I hope that helps, ladies. We're going to leave that there because uh, that's, that's over an hour. I always over talk. Let's see. It's interesting though. <laughs> I, I know. Like I know. But ladies, let us know if you've got any questions below just before we wrap up. Um, walking alongside, Vicky Stevens says, walking alongside parents of special needs children, being a listening ear and giving strategies to work with. Beautiful. That sounds like it really delivers on meaningful work, Vicky. I, I really like how you've articulated that. You're quite specific in terms of, of what you're wanting. And Victoria said something. Continuing like with these yeah. workshops is helping me find my icky guy. Oh, I'm so pleased. Thanks, Victoria. We love having you in Inner Circle. Um, Shara, are there any books you could recommend on icky guy? Yes, I'll pop some in so you can have a look at those um, in the description after this. No problem. Um, Pip, what I have met, brainstormed on my ikigai, contentedness, time, compassion, kindness, openness, connectedness, reflection, food, being a farmer, that's what we grow, but it's something that brings people together. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I love that. I love that. So there was overlap there, Pip, was there with all of those? 
That's interesting. That's great. That's great. That's a big list for overlap. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah. Understand impression. Fantastic. So ladies, just to wrap up, you can find your ikigai. It may take time. Stay curious during the process. Be kind to yourself. Put that detective Sherlock Holmes hat on in your quest to uncover something that is your right. It's your right to live on purpose. It's your right to find your flow and to find lights you up inside and it's something that the world needs the world needs more people to be working um you know on themselves and reaching that state of happiness and power that comes from being able to not only change your life but guess what happens when you find your icky guy you change and influence so many other people's lives as well and i think as women that's something that is hugely gratifying for us because we like to influence and we care and we're compassionate and nurturing by nature so let this be the start of a beautiful inquest and inquiry into it. If you've got any questions, let us know. We're always happy to help. As I said, I'll drop those um, books um, that, you can, that you can use in the description above. And please let us know how you get on. We'd love to see how you get on with this and see photos of your little icky guy boards. Yeah. And it's definitely good to do what you said as well about um, when you can't necessarily pinpoint the things that you're good at to ask close family um, family and friends what they think your strengths are. Yes. And that will help you to um, put more things on your list as well. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's, it's good to do that. It's yeah. helpful. That's your homework, ladies. <laughs> Remember, get out that values list. Ask friends and family what they see as you your strengths. discover something new as well. Yeah. Incorporate, absolutely, incorporate stillness practice and try to do one new thing every week just to broaden that mind we don't want to have 90 percent of thoughts on repeat every day we want to break free of that and invite newness and innovation and richness of experience into our life and you're the master of your own ship you're the captain of your own voyage so make it count design the passage and go for it you've got this ladies i can't wait to see what you come back with thank you for sharing today with me ladies and thank victoria so good much. on you for sitting with me for two and a half hours now in workshops I'm very proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> you need a medal. <laughs> Bye, Bye, ladies. I hope that helps. See you, See you. See you soon. Bye. Bye.